Right, Bleeding Church. Richard Pay, Bleeding's First Praise, 1297. I think I might have videoed this a long time ago. But what happens when I normally come near the church? I'm tired. I've been um, done a massive hike. St. Peter and St. Paul, but I know I've done it in the past. Probably on one of my very basic cameras. So, I have probably got a leaflet somewhere as well. To the memory of those at this parish who gave their lives in the war of 1939-45 to 45 for their faith and civilization. R RAF, someone RAF. Royal Navy, Royal Navy. <sighs> oh, I'm going to light a candle, everyone. For the world, for all the problems that are going on at the moment, for my family, for my family dead and alive, remember my sister Jude, who passed away not long ago, this is for everyone. The new war is virus. That's what they're saying. That was good. It's good to light a candle. Let's go up in the pulpit. This will be the only church I do today. And it's quite empty because uh, because of the coronavirus, people are keeping away. I don't know if they're holding services even at the moment. Um, but I think you, you're still allowed to come in. Nice wagon ceiling there. They always remind me of wagon trains actually. Doesn't it? They say that. That's what it probably comes from. It's about. It's a nice day today. All sorts of people under there. Of course, um, last people know if they follow me. Most of my ancestors, a lot of my ancestors on this on a particular branch, going back in time over a thousand years, is um, Suffolk and Cambridgeshire. Northamptonshire, Lincolnshire, Norfolk, London, Kent. And when they did my DNA, I was very, very concentrated, my, my DNA in that area. Um, going back a long way, going back a long way. At the moment, I'm studying um, some of my ancestry, going back to be just beyond um, Alfred the Great, <laughs> leading up to Charmaine. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm studying a quite a big period of it at the moment, looking at all the Saxon, Anglo-Saxon kings and queens of Kent, East Anglia, Wessex, and the battles with the about those from Mercia, Northumbria. Um, but on Monday I start a course with the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine through FutureLearn. And it's all about cor coronavirus 19. So it'll be interesting because I joined that course three weeks ago. We haven't started yet. And a lot has happened since that. It's going to be very interesting. And I'm hoping it will touch upon the ethical, economic, social, cultural aspects as well of the effects of this virus. It's going to have on society and the globe global world. So this is my sermon for today, everyone. 
Sheila's out on a walk before they start putting barriers up, if it's going to get like that, to stop us. Visiting other villages even. I mean, who knows? I don't know if it's going to get to that stage. I don't even know anyone who's got the virus. And a lot of people are saying the same. We've been told people are dying of it, but people die from pneumonia all the time. Thousands die every winter. But we have to be on guard if they're, if the whole world's panicking. There's no, the food supply and all that is going to dry up. Christ knows what's going to happen really. Apologies for that. Right then, I just take some photos over and out. Just a short video. On the 21st of March 2020, the first day of spring, and it's a beautiful day. And I'm heading up on a nice walk. Eventually, walking through Hutton Woods, down past Lockin and back, and popping into Asda to see if they've got any Luro. <laughs> Tomorrow's Mother's Day. A lot of pubs, clubs, well, oh, they're all closed, bars, restaurants. Um, they can't put anyone at risk, so they're all shut. So everyone will be having Mother's Day at home. A lot of families are split, though. A lot of families are split. Because um, the reason they're split... It's because some people have to self-isolate if they've got it and don't pass it on to the rest of their family. Small children, or even up to 18, I suppose, aren't allowed near older people like me, apparently. So, anyone ever 60 is supposed to be at rest now. Over and out. Right, leaving the church of St. Peter and St. Paul, or St. Paul and St. Peter... Lovely and peaceful in there it was, nice and warm as well. It's a lovely warm day for a change, with some blue sky as well. Right, just going down this little track now, it's part of my walk. For a minute I couldn't remember if it was down here or not. Of course in, when it's summer you'll get all the flowers and that, and you walk down here. Take me up. It'll take me up to a pathway that'll take me up to some fields. And uh, just hope the cows aren't out, don't we? That's all we can do, really. The sun will dry a lot of the mud out quite quickly, actually. seat at the top it's a bit well, it was always a bit um, wonky so it might have disappeared by now and there's a badger run it says Elmview Cottage Badger's Gate so it's possible that badgers do go across there so we're going up higher there's the church over there We just keep following this little track. Yeah, I've really needed to do a different walk. It refreshes the spirit if you do, if you do a different walk. So, uh, you never know what you're going to find. I'll put that as a washer. Just a washer. I found a Victorian penny, quite an old one, over at Winscombe once when I was walking along. It was just poking out the ground. Years ago they used to throw pennies at the bride and groom, see? And the kids would run and try and pick them up. It's an old gate. So we're at Bleason, the village of Bleason. It's got a history, it's got a lot of history here, Romans, 
Vikings, Max, everything. Battles, the Battle of Bleeding Hill. Yeah, they found ancient remains here as well of the original Bleeding Man. So there's a lot of history and you can find it all online. So I don't have to go into great depth, so I can't remember everything anyway. Well, this is what the first day of spring should feel like. Sunny and warm. There is quite a fierce wind, actually. But it's not freezing. I'm just hoping the cows aren't out. I might be asking too much today. They sound like they're getting closer, aren't they? I haven't often done it this way round, by the way. I normally do it the other way, nearly always. I've done this route and walked all the way to Crook's Peak and back in a day before now. It'll take me a lot longer now than it did 10 years ago, 13 years ago. I think I did it in nine hours there and back. <sighs> I wasn't exactly that fit then, no, I mean I was a smoker back then. Yeah, there's, oh the little bench is still there, but I won't sit on it. But it is still there, it's covered up with vegetation. There we go. We'll soon find out if there's any cows in a minute. There's the little bench. Oh, it looks a bit, look, maybe you put a few nails in it last summer, eh? It looks sturdier, yeah, I must have. Sit here for a second. Quite often, and there's people on the hill over there. I'll just zoom in. That's the way I came down. The last time I was over this way. You can't see them because it's focusing out, but... Right over there, some people coming down a hill. And, uh, there they are. That's what I've done before. Come down that way. That was the alternative, to go up that way. But what the plan is today, if there aren't cows, is for me to go across a field now. Across several fields, slow down, then climb up towards... A beautiful area that I like going down usually. But today the plan's to go up it. Right, over now I take some photos.